in order to truly appreciate javascript generators we need to look at iterators and fundamentally an iterator is an object that has a next method and this next method should return something with two properties a value and a done boolean let's demonstrate the usage of an iterator by creating a function that will give us one and of course the iterator is simply an object that has a next method and whenever we invoke the next method we should get back a value and a done boolean an excellent candidate for an iterator is the return value of a range function which sadly is not built into javascript and this is a function that should take a start value an end value and a step size and should start iterating at the start and then continue each time incrementing with the step till the value becomes more than the end we kick off the value with the provided start and then we return an iterator which again is simply an object that has a next method. We should stop returning values when the value becomes greater than the targeted end and we can determine that as the done boolean where value is greater than end. If this done becomes true, we simply return an object where value is undefined and of course done will be true. Otherwise we create a new result object with the current value and of course the done boolean which will be false. And then for the next iteration which may or may not happen we want to increment the value with the provided step with this value maintenance out of the way we can simply return our result object and that's it we successfully manually created our first javascript iterator let's create an iterator to play around with it by invoking the range function passing in a start of zero and end of two and the default step of one the first time we invoke the iterator next method we get back an object with the value which is the same as the start that is a zero and of course it is not done yet for two more times when we invoke the next method we get the value incremented by one and done will still be false but after that the value becomes greater than the end and therefore we start getting that object value undefined and done true this means that the iteration is complete and we should really stop bugging the iterator for more values iterator by itself is a very simple protocol and becomes really powerful when we put an iterator in a well-defined place inside an object and that is what makes an object iterable an iterable is an object that will have a property defined by the well-known symbol symbol.iterator and this property will be a function that should return something that follows the iterator protocol we've looked at symbols and well-known symbols before and the symbol.iterator is simply a well-known global symbol that has special meaning within javascript and in fact this is the heart of how iteration works for many of javascript's built-ins as an example we know that a javascript array is iterable using a for of loop and the secret reason why is simply because array defines a property symbol.iterator which points to a function that will give us back an iterator and in fact we can go really crazy and actually invoke it ourselves if you wanted to to get back an instance of the array iterator and if we invoke the next method a few times you can see that it behaves in the same fashion as our range iterator every time it gives us a new value and done false till it is out of values at which point it gives us value undefined and done true and this magic of getting the symbol.iterator function invoking that getting the iterator and then looping over the results is exactly what happens behind the scenes when we use a javascript for off loop on any given object including arrays a fun fact worth knowing is that we can actually iterate over a javascript string as well so if we use a for of loop with this message variable we get back the individual characters in individual iterations which of course will be h o l n a and no surprise message does have a property defined for symbol.iterator which is a function which we can invoke to get the iterator and as we invoke next again and again we get back the individual characters with done false and when we run out of characters we start getting value undefined done true it is worth pointing out that we don't have to return value undefined when done is equal to true it's just a nice convention to follow you could pretty much drop the value as well when done is true and it would still work now that we understand the iterator protocol and how a well-known symbol iterator can make an object iterable we can actually build our own custom iterables to recap an iterator is simply an object that has a next method which gives us back a value in a done boolean and an iterable is simply an object that has a well-known property symbol.iterator which must be a function that gives us back an iterator armed with this knowledge let's uplift our range function to return an iterable instead of returning a simple iterator
We kick things off as normal. We have the range function which takes a start and in a step and we initialize the value that we intend to return using the start and then we create our iterator which is simply an object that has a next method and the next method returns results such that they have a value and a done boolean. The object contained within the iterator is exactly what we previously returned when our range function was only returning an iterator. But now we've kicked things up a notch and we are going to return an object that has a well-known property symbol.iterator which is going to be a function that returns the iterator. And that's it. We've actually created something that can be used in the built-in iteration processes within JavaScript. As an example, we can use the for off loop on a range of 0 to 10 with a step size of 2. And we should get back the individual values which are 0, 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. And if we run this code, that is exactly what happens as we can see in the program output. The most common iterable we use in JavaScript is the built-in array. So of course, JavaScript has convenient ways to convert any iterable into an array. So we've looked at this function which returns an iterable because it returns an object that has a property symbol of iterator, which is a function that gives us an iterator. If you wanted to convert the result of a range invocation into an array, we could do that quite easily by creating an array, looping through the results using for off, and pushing the individual values into the array, and this would work, but as you would expect, there are better ways to do this. JavaScript array comes with a built-in function called from, which takes an iterable and returns an array. So you could use this function to take an iterable and convert it into an array, but there is actually special syntax built into the language that makes this even more concise. And we've actually already looked at this when we were looking at arrays, and the syntax is the array spread operator. And we've used these triple dots to spread one array into another, but underneath it doesn't really care if what you pass in is an array or any other iterable. Underneath it simply uses the iterable protocol, so it will work with our range function as well. And as you would expect, all of these approaches return the same result, but the spread operator is the way to go. What often confuses people is the fact that you can actually create an object that is both an iterator and is iterable. And that's actually important because JavaScript generators create such objects. But it's actually quite easy to do that ourselves even without generators. So we start off with a clean slate of the range function and we've defined the next method in isolation. Let's look at how we can create an iterator, then an iterable, and then combine the two concepts. For an iterator, it's going to be simply an object that has this next method. And then for an iterable, it's going to be an object that has the well-known property symbol.iterator, which is a function that gives us an object which has that next method. So there's actually no conflict between the two and we could create an iterable iterator that has the properties of the iterator and the properties of the iterable. And there's actually even an easier way to do this by using the JavaScript this keyword, which we looked at in a previous lesson, because the object that contains the symbol.iterator already has that next property, we can simply return that object by using the this keyword. And now our range function is something that returns an iterable iterator. Let's play around a bit with the result of a simple range call. For people that want low level access, they can do that by using the result.next method, they get back the values and the done and they can log out the values as long as the done is still false. But of course, most people will not want this low level access provided by the iterator and instead use the result as an iterable. As an example, using the spread operator to take that iterable and convert it into an array. In terms of behavior, both of these things work with the result. It is an iterator and it is an iterable. And the only reason why we are covering this is because this is the kind of object that a generator function returns. There is a lot more to iterables, but honestly, you already know more than you need to because you will most likely be using them transparently with generators, which is what we will look at in a future tutorial. As always, thank you for joining me and I will see you in the next one.